Hi guys, it's Weeded. I want to show you how to make these two pendants from embossing powder. I know this is embossing powder has been done. Um, I, this is just my take on it. I like woodsies, but they come a thousand for six or seven dollars. I go ahead and I file the edges just to make it nice and smooth and give it a more finished look. I'm pressing into basically just a glycerin pad for embossing powder. And I'm sprinkling on some, I believe, ivory shabby embossing powder. It's a little bit thicker. It's not um, ultra thick embossing enamel, but it's a little bit thicker. But really and truly for this method, any embossing powder will work. I'm using my hot pot and that has the advantage that it's heating from the bottom, but the disadvantage that it's on a sloped surface, sloped towards the back. And later on, when you're layering on the layers of um, embossing enamel, it can slide right off. But there I'm just showing you that it's melted, and I've got a nice ivory base. And next I come in with a color called Carnelian. It's by Iced Enamels. And again, it's nice and thick. If you were to try to use a hot gun with this, you would simply blow most of that um, powder off. So you do want something where you're heating from the bottom. Uh, I often use a skillet, uh, electric skillet. I do not know if a coffee warmer will work. I was looking for mine to try it. Simply, it's got a nice flat level surface. I think it would work, but again, I didn't get a, didn't have a chance to try it. And here I'm just showing you how it's partially melted, but I'm okay with that. I'm going to sprinkle in a little crushed glass. This is a uh, German silver crushed, crushed glass and I'm using it's fairly fine. On the other pendant that I did with the ivory I used some thicker pieces and they were harder to cover with the clear enamel and get a smooth top. But with the smaller pieces that I was using that crushed glass it was really easy. So I put the crushed glass on and then I go ahead and get the clear, and I'm sorry that I'm a little bit off frame here. I'll scoot it up in just a minute and you'll be able to see. I'm really layering it on heavy, okay? I want a good heavy coat. So I put that, put that back into the hot pot. And this is a point where you really do have to kind of keep an eye. There's one where I made the pieces are a little bit bigger and they were harder to cover with the clear. So I went with the smaller pieces of mica this time. But you do have to watch the hot pot on this at this stage and on the next stage because with the ivory one, I did actually have my um, enamel start sliding off the base and I had to trim it up with scissors and give it a good shape. So I don't have full coverage. I like the ivory peeking through and I'm going for another very heavy coat of clear embossing enamel embossing powder over the top and I'm melting it down and you just sort of have to keep an eye on it at this point. I, I do apologize because there's some footage in here that I thought I left out where you're going to watch me really really struggle with making a bale for the orange pendant and I just, I left it in. I'm sorry, I thought I had edited it out. And it's kind of like this, watching nothing going on. But even though it's sped up, it does give you a good idea of the length of time that you sort of have to warm it. And now I like what I've got. I could have done a third coat, but again, I didn't want to have another issue with it sliding off. So I just need to let it cool. And when I go to my um, ivory pendant, I'm going to glue a bale on. I use a weld bond, but you can use E6000. Any glue will work. I really like the way the ivory one turned out, but the, the mica pieces were just, they were a little bit big. They were actually left over from another project I did for uh, Love Fall Art and uh, from the Toadstool project. And I thought, well, I've got this nice little mix. I'll just go ahead and I tried to crush them up a little bit more, um, but I didn't get them crushed up 
quite as finely as I would like. It still makes a lovely pendant for the fall. And the, I glue the bale on. It's a, just a brass bale. By now, this one has cooled enough. I'm going to use my crocodile to put a hole in it. When I do that, I actually don't get it centered. You can see that just a little bit. And if I had gotten it centered, I would have put a jump ring in it and everything would have been fine. But because it was off center and I didn't want to just trash my whole project, I decided to make a bale out of seed beads. So I'm using bronze seed beads. And again, this is the footage <laughs> that I really thought that I cut out because you'll see that that I really struggle and I'll be honest the first time I did it I used um, I think one millimeter cord uh, maybe 0.75 millimeter cord or one I think it was one millimeter cord and I realized okay this is just too thick it's it's not tying well it's not gluing well I'm unhappy with it so then I went back and got the fishing line and <laughs> redid the bale and when I used the fishing line, I went through all of the beads actually three times just to make sure that it was fully secure. I tied it in two different places. Then I glued the two different places, the knots in two different places um, using the hypo cement. And then I also burned the threads. So it might be overkill, but at least I know that my beads are secure. Um, if you if anybody wants to see how exactly I did that since I did it off camera not meaning to but I couldn't see to work that far away and I can make some kind of arrangement so that my camera can be closer if you want to see how I made that bail but um, leave me a comment in in the comments section but here you get this great riveting footage of me periodically a hand flying or something or you see a cord or <laughs> whatever but it's just me trying to get the the basically the fishing line to go through the beads that many times and tie it off and yes this completely should have been cut out and I left it in because at this point I'm brain dead I have been fighting getting my video is rendered for mm, three days now, um, and it's been an absolute nightmare. And I even had to bring in the bad man, and that's B-A-D, uh, bad man, to come help me. And he was having trouble getting everything to render. He teaches video editing, so I didn't feel so bad that I was having issues. We finally had to work out some workarounds and I'm not sure if I'm even going to be able to get this voiceover attached and everything <laughs> rendered and get this uploaded in time for the actual event but I will go ahead and upload the video. I do like using embossing powders to make jewelry. I'm sure that other people have done the same thing. I didn't take the time to, to Google it. I'm not trying to take anybody's credit. Um, this is just something that I did after I did my mushroom, excuse me, my toadstool mixed media piece. I saw the little mica sitting there and I'm like, ooh, ooh, let's do this. That way I'll have some pretty new jewelry to wear for the fall with some of my sweaters. So that's how this originated. And there I'm actually haha, showing you that. Uh, the two different methods that I used and I think I'm still trying to get that worked out and I, here I go around the edges with this is a bronze sharpie and let me warn you any any marker that you use you're likely to ruin the edges on I tried using a leafing pen and yeah ruin the edges on it so just be aware of that and that's it that's the final touch on the pendant thanks